All right, I see you, MCU Disney Plus. You're doing good things. You're doing good things. Let's talk about it. My name is Brandon Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of Just My Opinion for my episode one review for Falcon and the Winter Soldier debuting on Disney+. Plus. And if you happen to like this video, please go ahead and give me that thumbs up and consider subscribing. I also want to let you know, guys, that this is going to be a non-spoilery review. I'm not going to spoil anything. However, I am going to have a spoilery review tomorrow, a full recap, but that will post when the actual episode posts for everybody. So you don't have to worry about me spoiling anything right here. So let's go ahead and get into this, guys. I really did enjoy this first episode. I thought it was phenomenal and my expectations were very, very high, to be honest with you. This was actually my most anticipated MCU Disney Plus show that they were coming out with. And so far, I'm loving it. First thing that I loved about this episode in episode one was as soon as it started off showing Sam Wilson, it instantly feels like a Marvel Cinematic Universe movie, an MCU movie. It actually feels like instead of us watching a movie in a theater, we're actually watching the movie at home. The only difference is it's not like at least an hour and a half like everything else. It comes in at about 43 to 45 minutes. And so it is longer than the WandaVision episodes. And I did love that series as well. And about WandaVision, I, I, I did like this series. I appreciate everything that they gave me, but it didn't feel as MCU as some of the other material that came before that. But this Falcon and the Winter Soldier, like I said, as soon as it started, it felt like I was watching a movie at home. The next thing that I really liked about this, of course, was the action. We all tune in this stuff because we want to see some people get their bucks kicked. We want to see the punches and kicks and throws and all that good stuff. And the action in this, I mean, it's great. I mean, I, I didn't expect it to be bad, but it was great. But I love how they took everything to the next level, especially with the Falcon. He is becoming one of my favorite characters in the MCU. And the thing that he does with these wings, I mean, we see him flying around a ton. And you see that in the trailers, him flying around in the mountains, going through all these narrow corridors, dodging mountain, uh, dodging mountains, dodging missiles and stuff like that. And we saw that in the Winter Soldier when his character first debuted. But like I said, they took it up to the next level. And how did they do that? They updated his tech. They upgraded his tech, all of his gadgets, all of his gizmos. And everybody, if they would have put on the, the Falcon suit, they would not be able to to do what Falcon is able to do. It clearly shows that he is a skilled, trained warrior soldier and Avenger, and he knows what he's doing. There is something special about him, and I love the things and the upgrades that they gave to his suit. Now, as far as the Winter Soldier is concerned, Bucky Barnes, I love the action that we got in this as well. It's not as much as the Falcon, but it still did deliver. Now, the next thing I loved about this is, besides the action and it feeling like an actual MCU movie, I like where they're going with the characters, okay? Because the last time we saw the Falcon in the Winter Soldier, they were just on the battlefield, you know? Especially with the Winter Soldier. I mean, the last time we saw him, I mean, he was in the Civil War movie, Captain America Civil War, and at the end of the credit scene, he was over in Wakanda, or he was in Wakanda, and he got frozen. Next time we see him in Infinity War in Wakanda, he just gets a vibranium arm, and then that's it. And then in, and, and we saw him in the tent at the end of uh, Infinity War with Shuri. No, excuse me, at the end of Black Panther with Shuri. And then when he popped up in Infinity War, that's when he got his vibranium arm. And then he was dusted. He was blipped. He was decimated. And then he just pops up in, in Avengers Endgame on the battlefield again. So we now actually get to see how his character is, is being developed in the MCU without an Avengers team, without Captain America, without any family. Everybody he knows died in the 1940s. So who does he know? Who does he go and hang out with? Who does he go to the bar with? You know, who is he calling on a date? You know, is it, is, how is his mind? Where is his mental state? We get to see all of that. And I absolutely loved it. And it's the same thing with the Falcon, but taken to a, a, the next level as well. We really do get to see who his family is, you know, who he cares about, you know, who he calls or who calls him if he is in a time of need or in a time of desperation. You know, who does he spend Thanksgiving or Christmas with? Now, I'm just that's just an example. There is no Christmas or Thanksgiving, you know, in this episode, but we get to see his family, you know, where he comes from and all that good stuff, like where, what he cares about, you know, like, you know, his mortgage payments, et, et, et cetera. I like all of that. 
We also got a nice tidbit, a nice taste of what the villains are going to be like. And I, I, I like all of that. I mean, it was stellar. It was great. It was very compelling and engaging. And kind of like also with WandaVision, how in episode four with Monica Rambeau, that episode opened up with her coming back from the snap, from the blip. That's what the whole MCU is right now. Everybody is just trying to manage their time and be like, okay, man, what's going on? I was gone for five years and I just popped back up. Like, whoa, I mean, billions of people appeared out of nowhere after five years. And that is going to shake up the world. And that is what this episode is centered on. And I, I'm, I'm loving it so far. I'm loving it so far. There's also a couple of uh, cameos from previous characters that popped up in the MCU before. One of them is going to be a surprise. You, you're you not going to guess who it is. And I'm not trying to overhype it like it's like, oh, my God, it's going to break the Internet. No, that would be a lie. That would be an exaggeration. But you're not going to guess who it is. And the other character, I mean, you pretty much knew already. You're like, OK, it makes sense that this character will pop up here, you know, and and it's seamless and it just makes sense that this character is there. Um, overall, I really did enjoy the episode. I won't say it's a perfect 10 out of a 10 because when it had to deal with the Falcon in a few moments, the pacing did slow down just a little bit, but that's actually my only complaint. Okay. I mean, I really did enjoy this episode. I cannot wait to episode two and just wait on to the end of this video where I'll go ahead and give my rating for this episode. But guys, also I was able to talk to Anthony Mackie and the writer producer Malcolm Spellman in a round table interview. So if you want to see that video, just click right here and you can see that. And also click right here as well so you can see my reaction to the final trailer for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. But guys, that is just my opinion. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like the video, please go ahead and give me that thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel. Help me reach 30K subscribers. I'm right there. And if I had to rate episode one for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier on Disney Plus, it would be an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. But guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery, and that's just my opinion. Peace.